Professor Josiah Wakefield. Professor Alberto Crane. How does that uh, how does that feel? Still getting used to it. Yeah, people call me professor and I'm like, mm. like even older people I look up to, professor, and I'm like, oh wow. I'm like it's legit. I'm a professor now. I'm still getting used to it. We met up, you're like, man, you're like 15. I'm like you're you're still the same size, right? Because we're looking at some of the kids, like the <laughs> teens, right? Yeah. I think when I started, your I was brother, about like your 185. Your brother, your brother was a big, like, you guys are both big kids. You yeah, guys big got big, like, pretty young. I'm really grateful for that, right? honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you don't get, you don't, you get, you don't get bullied too much, right? Nobody's going to really mess. Maybe I'll just not mess did, with you. Yeah, when they did mess with us, like, because that's why I started training, is it was because they were even bigger than I was. So, yeah, but mo mo most often we don't get messed with. We're, we're like the, your brother, the big yeah, guys I mean, walking down the street. Yeah, yeah, your dad signed you up because of that, right? Like the, he's telling me the story. He's a little worried about you because you 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 uh, you knocked some guy out, right? And something like that. Yeah, that's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's not why I started. No, but, but the that's why he brought you in because he was worried about you. Yeah, yeah. So a couple reasons why I started. One, I like to fight. I just like being the the big man. And then two, I and well, no. First, first I started wrestling. I started wrestling up north in Northern Cal. Yeah, <clears throat> so I grew up in Burbank, and I moved up north for like the beginning of beginning of my high school years. Mm. So I was 14 years old, and I was I was a pretty big kid, but mm. I, yeah, I was a pretty big kid. I thought I was I was good, you know, and and just one day I was like walking home from the skate park, like the skate park's like right next to the school. So I'm walking down to the skate park, and at the skate park, these two dudes just like walk up to me, and they're like. Let me check your pockets. Like they, they pocket they check, check me. your pockets. Let me check your pockets. Yeah, and I thought to myself, I'm like, man, if I wanted to, I wanted to throw down because I just liked to, like, I, I wanted to be. I didn't like feeling um, dominated, right? Yeah, so yeah. they checked my pockets. I didn't like that. So the next check like your pockets, is like steal money yeah. or whatever you had. Yeah, that's, yeah, they pocket check. That's what, that's like the slang for. I don't know. Give like, me whatever you have in your pockets. Exactly. Like, man. give me all your lunch money, like that kind of stuff. But pocket check it. Yeah. So they pocket checked me, and uh, and then like the next day, I remember, I I heard about the wrestling tryouts or just wrestling wrestling starting at high in high school mm -hmm. the wrestling season, and I had the option to either start drumline or wrestling like because I was super into drumming before I did yeah yeah your first email was drummer drummer sigh yeah yeah you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I was like what's this Yo, yeah that's my email yeah, I got like drums <laughs> I was all in I was all in now now my, my now my gmail is Josiah Wakefield BJJ yeah. so like, whatever I'm into I'm in uh yeah so I had the, I had the choice to like choose whether I wanted a drum line or and it was like crazy because I knew in that moment when I was 14 years old that whatever decision I make is going to like shape the rest of my life. And then I'm like, you know, screw it. I'm going to do wrestling because I, I wanted to kick some ass. So, But you you wrestled in down here? You started wrestling down here? I started wrestling when I moved up north, my first year of high school. Okay, so you got pocket checked up north. Yeah, I got pocket, che pocket checked up north. Yeah. Okay. Vallejo, shout out Vallejo. I love you, okay, Vallejo. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, so. And you're like, man, I want to I wanna learn how to defend myself if I need to or uh -huh. you know, handle business. Exactly, exactly. And then that... And then, yeah, so that's how I started. That's not even the jiu-jitsu part yet. Right, right, right. And so then, then I, mm -hmm. I moved back down here to Los Angeles after a wrestling season. And, uh, and the high schools down here in Burbank, they don't have, they don't have wrestling. Right, right. Um, but they didn't back then probably. No, they still don't, right? I don't think they do. Yeah, I yeah. mean, Glendale I has it. Glendale I mean, yeah, has it. Or, um, Hoover. Hoover has it. Yeah, Hoover was like the only one. I actually thought about like going to Hoover just mm -hmm. so I could wrestle. Uh, so... There was like a gap between wrestling season and like not doing any sort of martial art. There was mm. a gap, and in that gap, that's when I was getting in like the most, most fights, and getting in the most trouble. Mm. Um, I was like skating, hanging around the wrong people, getting into fights, and I was like, man, my parents were like, you got to do something. Like mm. you got to figure out. Like I have to channel this anger somewhere, right? So then, for my fifteenth birthday, I told them like. Well, I wanna I wanna try jujitsu for my birthday. And then they like, okay, well there's this place down the street. And my dad hit me up. He's like, I was skating with some friends, about to do some more I don't know. Stupid stuff. Stupid stuff. I'm uh -huh. right about to. And then uh he's like, Hey, I'm right down the street, come through. 
And uh, I come through, and that started the journey when I was 15 years old on my 15th birthday. But what happened with there was a situation where, like, he was all worried about you because I guess they videoed, <coughs> somebody videoed you. Oh, yeah, that's a stupid video. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and then he saw it, and then he was, like, so he was like worried about, you know, just you. Mm -hmm. and he's like, I want him to be, like, disciplined or whatever. I don't know what the reasoning was, just more self-control. Yeah, just channel that energy somewhere, right? You know. So what? What was it? What's the story? What was it from just your end, your side? My side of the story. That uh, I look back on that and I try to forget it. What? <laughs> I don't like thinking about it. <laughs> and I bring it up. You yeah, <laughs> you're embarrassed. Or yeah, it's ashamed. Uh, I am. I am. It's. I don't. I don't condone like street fighting. For, I don't like that anymore. You know. Um, but the situation was. It's just kids being kids. You know just smack talking back and forth. It mm. even started online. Like, mm. like this guy was like talking smack to some of my friends. And uh, I just stepped in because I was like the big kid, mm. you know, I was a big one. And this other guy was pretty big too. And he's talking smack to like this smaller, smaller one of my friends. Yeah. So I step in, I'm like, all right, let's fight. So we meet up. You stood up for your friend. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's I yeah. So yeah, I stood up for my friend and, we we just threw that like it was a big meetup like I don't know how many so many people found out about it mm. but it was like a little a little in house tournament you know it was like a bunch of our friends just pulled up out of nowhere uh. people were calling we meet up at the park big circle we throw down and knock them out in like four punches like one two three four boom so you guys squared up and then squared up yeah. It was just a clean fight. It was clean. Yeah. Like we had rules and everything. Like there was a guy there. He was like, the all ref. right, here's the, yeah, there was a referee. It was like, all right, no, no ground fighting. Cause, uh, we heard you wrestled before uh. and it was like, no ground fighting. I was like, okay. Uh, then he's like, ready, ready, fight. <laughs> and, it, and, <laughs> and it was on video too. <clears throat> yeah. But you knocked the, 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 cause your dad was all worried about you. Like, you know, getting into doing stupid stuff and you I'm know, secretly yeah. proud of a street fight, but at the same time, I'm not. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. So then, then it went around. My dad found out about it. I think even like some police found out about it. They talked mm -hmm. to me about it in school, and then that's when my dad was like, he was like, hell yeah, like in, under under yeah, his breath, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, good yeah, job, yeah. but 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 that's not good. Yeah, yeah. So no, he was, took me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, then you went back up north after that. No, 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 no. You started here and then you stayed. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I was just That's still right. getting into more trouble. Even after I did a year of wrestling, I was finding more trouble to get yeah, into. And yeah. then, it's your your story is interesting, right? Because uh, I mean, just kind of how things happen to like, you know, not to you know, like I you know, love your your parents, love your dad. You know, I spend a lot of time with with your dad, and I think he's a great great guy. You know, but you know, like your your in your home life was a little bit like a little bit all over the place, and you know, you uh, inconsistent in school, like, and you were like, you know, like you know your your habits right yeah. or like we're out of whack like you mm. were just like you know yeah you weren't you weren't doing so well you know you were staying up all night and you know doing what i don't know what, what you know, playing video games or whatever you know and then going not being able to stay awake at school and nobody was was kind of yep you know watching out or you know telling you to i don't know i don't know what was, what was going on but but i know when we cross paths you know uh well you know you were you came in and you trained you know just as a student, but you know, your dad like lost, you know, um, you know, wherever you guys are staying, the, the your apartment, and then you know, he like asked me if he could stay on the couch, and the next thing I knew, I saw like this big kid, you know, right next to him on the couch, right, and I was like, man, that's 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 not okay, you know, um, that's not right, and so I, I you know, I asked Adit if if you could stay in our guest house, right, and uh, and. Uh, yeah, man. And then we started like getting close and Leonidas was like your your vice principal at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, Professor <clears throat> Leonidas, black one of black belts, and we were trying to work together to get you like, you know, on on just on track, right? Yeah. Getting like like just the routine and you know yeah, just the routine. That I remember when you told me about like, hey man, you wanna get you want in? Like this is how it's gonna be. And he told yeah. me the routine. Yeah, and you know, it's it's interesting because I I'm just remember remembering you know, mm -hmm. and I remember talking to you too, and uh, 
it's funny, man, because like you're like you're beast, man. You're like, bro, you're professional. Like, you know, you you, you know, it's, I'm really proud. You know, I'm really proud of like the man you becoming, young man you are. You know, Thank you. it's really really cool. You know, because I remember those days, and uh, you know, you, you're okay. You're not good, but you're like you had like you know, your self esteem was like was really down. Yeah. Of what you thought, like you know, because I had you know, I would talk to you, I'd drive you in the morning. You know, uh, you know, I have my little, my, my little, my my two cents. You know, yeah. in, in your ear. You know, that and, was the best. I'm and, extremely lucky. And uh, and then you know, it was just like you were. It was like sh well, first we tried to get you to finish the school, you know, to graduate and stuff. Yeah. But uh, you were kind of like, and the teachers always liked you because they they really liked you because you're you're a good person, you know. But you know, whatever you had your your habits were all wrong, right? Or, yeah. Or just it was a mess, you know. Yeah. And so it was like almost it was too late, right, to kind of catch up to do the things, and and then uh, we tried, right? Me, yeah, we tried. Leonidas, I tried. You know? Yeah, we tried, you know. Yeah. But it was kind of like you were so far behind, and and then uh, I remember like the moment was like, okay, all right, you know, this is what you're gonna do. This is I'm all in. Yeah, I was like, I got nothing else. Well, yeah, you didn't have a choice. You know, you were staying in my guest house. I would drive you in the morning. Yeah. You would do we we I did it with you. We would do the 6:30 a.m. class. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I did the 10 a.m. no gi. There was a 10, a 10 a.m. no gi, and then I don't know if do we have. Do, I was teaching that 10 a.m. Yeah, I was teaching that because yep. Philippe was. Yeah, I remember that. I was teaching the 10 a.m. no gi. Yep. And then we had the noon class, and then you had to help with the kids in the afternoon. Yeah. Like 4:30, 5:30, and then you trained 6:30, 7:30, Monday. Yeah. And then 8:30, I would do. It was like a sometimes it was like a drilling class, and I would do it with you. So yeah. I was there all day with you. All freaking day. You know, and it became good fast. Fast, yeah. But it was like a shock. You're like, oh my, like you, was, you didn't have a choice, you know? Yeah, I had no choice. There was no other way. I was like, I got to make it in jujitsu or not. Yeah. yeah. There's no there's no school to fall back on. I don't have got a diploma. And then, like, George's brother, Eduardo, came in because you were like, oh, you're dude. like this big kid, but you're like kind of by yeah. yourself. And then I like kind of helped, you know, to kind of totally, you know, break it up and have you have some like social interacting. Right? Yeah. And so did, <laughs> yo, I mean, I really like, I'm not, I'm like kind of like a turtle or a hermit, people call me. Yeah. Like, I'm good being alone most often, most times. But I, it was like a, long while where it was literally just like me and you training all day and like that was it i was like man i haven't seen my friends in ages i haven't seen my uh and then Eduardo came along and he was like he's uh george's brother professor george yeah from professor Glendale, george's yeah. brother and yeah then Eduardo came along and i had a little training buddy yeah somebody to drill with Great to train with, with that to, guy. yeah to you know be 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 young with right day one and gino gino too gino, gino duarte yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, the day one homies. Yeah, yeah, and so then you had some friends like around <coughs> your age, and you had your other friends, but you were like, you were on the grind, you know, you were like all day long. Dude, it's crazy. Like, man, I did. I had a bunch of friends before I started jujitsu, and it's crazy. Like, not the best kind of friends. To really like change your lifestyle or something, you got to look at the people that you're hanging around with, mm. you know. And if you're like, if you're if you see stuff that you don't like about them most likely you're going to be like them mm -hmm. you know so <clears throat> it's kind of like if you want to change your lifestyle you got to take some things out you got to take some bad habits out and then replace them and it might feel lonely for a while but it you, you just build off of that and then mm -hmm. your life just gets better you know because most people like i i could have easily said alberto i want to quit i want to go back i don't want to do this anymore i don't want to go back to my old ways hanging out with my old friends you know it, if I'm gonna just get my memory, you know, because it's, it's a cool story, you know. It's really like, man, you're like, you know, your success story, really. Thank you. It's like amazing, you know. I'm so proud, really. Thank you. Like that time, okay, you were homeless. Your dad on the guy with with your dad for like a minute, you know. You had a fight with your mom, so you couldn't stay with your mom. <laughs> yeah. And you so you stayed with your dad, and then your dad lost his apartment. You guys were sleeping on the couch, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I came, you know, I was like. Oh, Hard man. times. Like, you know, I talked to Deet. I was like, hey, you know, can he, uh, you know, stay in our, you know, in, our, in the guest house, whatever. And then and then that's how it started. Right. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then, you know, the you know, the, the school didn't work out. And then, OK, all right. You're going to you're going to 
you're gonna do work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember at the end of the night too, I would I would take you guys take you to Chipotle or whatever. Some you know, El Pollo like, Loco. El Pollo Loco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Fiji guys. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the routine. And then uh, All yeah, man. routine. Yeah, and then like I remember like Nick, like Big Nick, you know, like you you know, because he was a pro belt, you were like a white belt, but like man, you. Because all the reps, the 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 amount of time you're putting on the mat every day. Yeah, we'd go at it. You you got good, and you were like running circles around these guys. It was crazy. Yeah, that's what it takes. I mean, you know, you had you had talent, you had natural talent, you know. I had the time too. But you put the work in, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just the routine was like. But you were you're you're. I remember too. You were like in shock, you know. Yeah, it was hard, and I'm I'm grateful for your. Your persistent patience, because man, I know it wasn't oh, yeah. easy. Like, <laughs> like it wasn't easy for me, but I bet it wasn't easy for you, because there'd be days where I'm like, Alberto, I can't, I can't today, you know. Like you're like, hey man, come on, let's go. And like some days I feel like, oh, I'm not feeling yeah, it. You try to make excuses at the beginning, excuses, in the morning, yeah, it, yeah, in the morning. I, I had to like, break those excuses. And I didn't listen. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, you know. Right. I'm sick. I'm this. I'm that. You know. You're like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> It's funny because uh, Seban's, you know, he's he's you know he's around that age now too, you know. Mm. So see some similarities. Well, just you know, teen being a teenager too is tough, you know, because mm. you you know hormones are all, all out of whack and yeah, you know you you know you're, you're a kid but you're an adult, you know, like you're like in between. And I don't know. I think that that makes it a whole other you know presents a whole other thing of challenges in that too, right? Yeah. Hormones are all out of whack. You don't know what you really want to do yet. You know, and, you know. One of the things when I was, uh, it's, I just remembering some some stories. You know, like I remember the first pans. Like we prepared. You were a white belt. You know. Yeah. And I think uh, was it the pan. Yeah, it was the pans. Like you got second. You know, like you did really good. Um, and uh, and then I, I remember giving you a gi, like a shower gi, and it was all patched up. It was all nice and pretty. You know. And I remember it was just the. Uh, it was just the. Uh, what do you call it? Um, just like I remember seeing, I just felt it, you know. You're like, man, I like you, not, like you didn't deserve it, or I don't know, you know, you weren't worthy or something, you know. No, I wasn't. I, I don't think I've ever received like all the hype around AMP at the time. You remember, like mm -hmm. when you gave it to me, uh, that was like the gi to have. Okay. You know, and it was like a prototype. Okay. Oh, that was that was another one, but that it was the first one. I don't know if you even remember, you know. But I, it was just the feeling I had. You it was know? the one for pans, right? Uh, it was I think it was like the worlds or something like that, you know. Or maybe even uh. uh but uh, you know, I just, I just remember that feeling, you know. So it's just it's cool to see you like you really evolve, you know. Yeah. And come come into your own. Or like even for food, I I was like, man, I don't wanna. I, had, I, I didn't bad. feel you worthy had... for anything, uh. you know, like even asking for food or. I don't know if receiving gifts. I'm like, I don't deserve this. I don't want. It makes me more uncomfortable than pleasure to receive things, you know. Yeah, but I watch you now. Like I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the one talking, you know. But and you know, I just watch you now. I just want to say, you know, like I see you interacting with the teenagers in the teens class. You're phenomenal, man. The way you connect with them, the way they listen to you. Not just the teens class, but all the classes, the kids, the adults, you know. Wow, thank you. Yeah, That's man, you're phenomenal. Your jiu-jitsu is really complete. Takedowns, passing, guard game, different types of guard, you know, like really complete jiu-jitsu. Really good teacher. You're professional. Yeah. Fuck. You know what I mean? Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like by but you know, you put in the work, you know. You put in the work, starting with those early mornings, back in those days, resisting, but not, you know, I mean, maybe you don't have a choice, but you did. You did. And you're like, all right, all right, all right. And you know, you just took it, took it, took it. And then little by little you started to change. And then we came up here in our podcast studio, which used to be your living room. You lived up here for three years. You were reminiscing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think around the 17 years old, I was living in your garage, right? right? You invited me into your age, garage, yeah. Yeah. and uh, that was the routine. You know, he'd drive me, train all day. And then there was a point where I was like, okay. Uh, I think you, it was turned 18, you turned 18, your 18th birthday when you turned 18. Right when I turned 18, I moved up here. You said, hey, you can, like, want to live upstairs? <laughs> I think Coach Alex was moving, or moving out, like, around the same exact time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, like, let's go. And I had a buddy... Buddy Juan moving mm -hmm. as well, and the only thing up here was a, was Alex's old couch that he was gonna take and like a, an old blanket that he left. 
And I'm like, all right, here I, this is my home. And I had like my backpack. I walk upstairs and I sleep on the couch with my backpack and some sheets. Yeah. And yeah, that was like on my 18th birthday or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the, ju- the the grind continued. Just yeah. up, now, now I'm living upstairs. Now yeah. it's even like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. This all day training. The yeah. gym rat lifestyle. <laughs> like literally a gym rat living on top of a freaking gym. You know, and then and then like a lot of your friends, like oh, like Tarek, and just saw a lot, a lot of your friends, like like the people. I don't know, maybe not all their friends, but a lot of your friends, they they started to train jujitsu too, yeah, right? Yeah, you got them to come to do jujitsu. Yeah, you know Tarek. Um, yeah, me and him, like we went to high school together, and then I'm like, hey, come come through, try this thing out, mm-hmm. and because Tarek's an athlete. Yeah, yeah. And he just picked it up. Yeah. He just picked it up quick. Is he teaching he's in, in Pasadena, Pasadena now? Yeah, he's teaching in Pasadena. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, he's who would have really, He's doing really good, yeah. Who would have thought, right? Like, back then, it was just, like, a fun thing for us to do. We like to wrestle and play around, and now now we're both freaking teaching. And, he, yeah, he's an athlete. He's really good, too. Going back going back into time and, like, what are some of the, you know, I know you, you said, like, uh, you said a few things like what are some of the memories that you have like you know just starting out like now you know because it's, it's some years ago but like what do you those times you're like i'm really grateful for those times but what do you what do you remember like just you know come just going to you know the, your routine was like totally different right and and having to to be here all day and and and, and train and teach like when once you kind of left school yeah once I left school, what was, yeah. like, my routine like? No, no, but what, what do you remember of that time? Right when I, like, around the time when I left school. Yeah, like when, yeah. Oh, man. So I remember, I remember when the journey began, uh. when it was, like, one day you, it was, it was when I was, like, sleeping on your couch or something, like, a downstairs. Okay. Of Legacy. You let, you let me and my dad, like, crash here. Right. And then... No, it actually started at the in-house at the in-house tournament. Okay. So because of my season of wrestling, uh. um, I, I I did I was doing some jujitsu, and you had the legacy in-house tournament. Okay. I was a white belt. I think that was like my first exposure to like a jujitsu tournament, uh-huh, uh-huh. and I won that. I won that in-house tournament, and I was like, oh, pretty good. And, you know, I want to just double like everybody. I remember that. I yeah, don't, I, don't, I don't remember that. Yeah, it's good. I, yeah. I did notice you. Yeah, I have the video still on Facebook. Wow. Of, of every match that I had that wow, day. Wow, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, you did really good. Yeah, I beat everybody, and uh, and I, I took notice of that, you know, and I remembered you. I was like, man, good job. Yeah, I don't think we knew each other at all then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, right? I kind of saw your face, you know, just glancing. Yeah, but just then a you, kid. You just, stood out. Yeah, and then I won, that. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So then soon after that, like you, um, me and yeah. my dad, you helped us out through the hard times, you know, you helped us, you know, we crashed on your couch. And then I think maybe that in-house tournament, maybe kind of like put me on your radar a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you're a busy yeah, guy, yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing stuff. And then that's it. I yeah, won that in-house. Yeah. And then you're like, Hey, Josiah, like, I know you're sleeping on my couch, but, uh, you pulled me into the office and you're like, you want, how about you stay in my garage? Like, yeah. Garage, ca- Gar- uh, guest yeah. house conversion. It's a guest house. It's a guest house. Yeah. yeah. How about you Has stay in my bathroom sorry. And kitchen? It's actually a really nice garage. It's a guest house. Um, <laughs> how about you stay in my guest house? And I'm like thinking, like, what? It's like, what's this? What do you mean? And it's like, hey, but here's how it's gonna be. Like, we're gonna be training all day. You told me how, like straight up what it's gonna be. And I had a choice then too. I was like, yeah. I got two paths. I can say no or yes. If I say yes, so I was just like, I was in a state of like, I can't say no. You yeah. know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And then boom, I said yes. You're like, all right, see you next week. You're you're coming. You're gonna stay with me. Yeah, well, I talked to your dad, and you know, I don't yeah, know what I, I did, of course. You know? But uh, yeah, and and I think I think I don't think you even realized because I remember talking to you too about you know, just the different ages, man. Before you know it, you're gonna be like 20, and then you're gonna be 23. Oh it's man, I remember really you telling fast. me how, how yeah, you you told me that every day. You're like, hey man, put in that work. Like every day, I tried to stop, and every day I wanted to quit. You're like, hey man, time flies. You know, put it like you're gonna look back and you're not gonna regret it, but like you will if you don't if you don't keep trying. You know? Yeah, keep trying. Cause time flies, and yeah, if like I keep I I wanted to just be like, oh, I'll just train tomorrow, train right, tomorrow, right, right, just train right. tomorrow. And you're like, dude, time flies, man. It's not gonna fly like that. You gotta you gotta put in the work. 
And you know what's crazy? It flies either way. Whether you, like, whether I, I say, oh, I want to train tomorrow, or I'll train. Like, you have two choices, to train or not to train. Either way, the time flies. So why not just do what's good for you in the meantime, you know? So I'm like, oh, my God. You, you would say, pretty soon you're going to be 25, and you're going to be like, where did all the time go? I'm 25 now. My God. I hit that moment, and I'm like, whoa. I was just 18, like... A minute ago. A minute ago. Yeah. And you're telling me this. You're saying, when you turn 25, you're going to be like, where'd the time go? And here I am. It's crazy. You were right. I'm just saying you were right. <laughs> uh, I remember, like, another memory is uh, the summer camps. They, like, put you to help with the summer camps, oh, too. The summer camps. The grind, right? And, uh, and I did a little I bit remember, of that. Yeah, and then... Uh, oh, shoot. The summer camps. You want to talk about the yeah, yeah, yeah. teaching me how to drive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how I learned how to drive, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> how did it start? I think uh, it started when I was living. Uh, you said, all right, you're driving home. So at the end of the night I w of training, you're like, all right, you're driving home. <laughs> Can I tell the story? Yeah, yeah. Tell yeah. the story, yeah. All right, cool, cool. So, yeah, like I was... I don't even think I was seven. Yeah, I was 17. I think I was 17. And at the end of the training, you just right. me the keys. You're 18. You're 18. I was 18? Yeah. You sure? Okay. Go go home to my, to my house? Yeah, to, to your my, house. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you just handed me the keys to your old uh, your old beat-up Honda. Remember that mm. thing? The Honda Accord? It was a nice. It was a hybrid. It was uh, nice. Uh, <laughs> it was. <laughs> but I, I beat it up. You know? <laughs> yeah. it was, I didn't take care. <laughs> <laughs> like the light was... The, it's like, my, it's like my, my truck, you know? It's like a nice truck, but I'm like, I never, I never wash it. You're always hitting yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like the bumper was falling off and the, the, the side view mirror was like busted off too. So you're like, all right, you're driving home. And I'm like, I don't know how to drive. You're like... Well, you got figured out. Just go. And I'm like, all right, here we go. I think uh, the first time I drove on a freeway, it was like one of the first times I was driving back to your your pad. You were like, all right, we're taking the freeway today. No, it wasn't the first time. I th it was a couple of times in. Like, I maybe drove home three times on the side streets. And then on the fourth time, we took the freeway. Yeah, I remember we took the, the streets, yeah. And then I made this. I, I haven't made a left turn yet in, the, in all the times that I've driven home. And the first left, like, you pull out, it's a, it, the light turns green, and, you know, the person making a left has to wait for oncoming traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that, so I just pull right in front of, like, this whole line of cars coming through, and, like, beep, and I'm, that's, like, my first, I'm like, okay, now I got to go on the freeway. So I made it past that hurdle. I made the left turn. Now I'm going on the freeway, and uh, I'm, like, going, like, 40 on the freeway, and everybody's just flying by me. <laughs> You know, like, come on, it's like a go-kart. That's what you said. It's just, now you it's just said like it, driving yeah. a go-kart. I, I remember you saying that to me. You know, oh, it's like a, like a go-kart. Okay, ga gas and then, <laughs> and then brake. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like a go-kart. <laughs> and then uh, I got a lot more practice <laughs> with uh, the summer camp. Remember the... I remember because, you know, I had a van, and then I had to rent a van, and then... Uh, you know, you weren't. I don't think you're driving, but uh, but uh, you had to take my my. I think that was the first time you actually, you actually drove the car. From my from my memory was I was like, I drive my car back, you know, to the gym. It was just a few blocks, you know. Yeah. So from Enterprise to the gym. Right, that like was the to first like time. two blocks. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first time. Yeah. And then after that, we I was like, you're gonna drive drive me home, drive us home, you know, or do this, do that, go on the freeway. Duh, duh, duh. Yep. And do you then, remember that Honda I hit? You hit a Honda? Yeah. I think I was in your I was in your Honda and there was like this riced out Honda parked in front of Enterprise. It was somebody that worked there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. All right. It's a, it's a, yeah. And I I think I still had it in reverse or something and I'm like I'm about to like I'm about to pull out onto into traffic so I could like Yeah, leave. you swiped it, you swiped and it. And I just went like boom, I just went like straight back yeah. thinking it was in drive. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, don't worry, we'll figure it. You know, we talk. We, whatever paid for the, they were cool, and you yeah, know, paid cool, for luckily. we paid for the damage, the damages, whatever, to the body like, shop. You know, like, oh be like, oh my god, oh my god. I was like, don't worry. <laughs> 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 and I remember, Chris, I remember Krista like recording you, like trying to parallel park in the back. Are you kidding me? She got, she recorded that. Oh, you, know, you never saw no, that. I never saw oh, that. Dude, she was recording you and like putting on. A, I don't know if it was Instagram 
time yet, you know, but yeah. like posting on the stories, you know? <laughs> she would. She would, Make dude. it funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, it's funny. I didn't have my license, uh, and she she asked me to drive to get, to get like, her cat food or something before the store closed because she was working. So I... I don't know why people trust me with their cars <laughs> without a license. Yeah, that, that, was, that was one of the big... I, I learned a lot, like, way more than just jujitsu here. I learned how to drive. <laughs> I learned communication skills, discipline, like, just lifestyle. <laughs> like, the, the... You talk about the lifestyle, like, you know... I don't know, life. Just life in general, man. Yeah, like all your friends, all the people you 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 know you're with every day. Like they're your friends too, right? And and um, like you know, I mean, we can we can all like during the pandemic, right? Like like it, you you became like a super heavy or heavy uh, whatever Dude. heavy a super heavy. Dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you and your brother, you guys can put 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 some weight on. Yeah, we put on some poundage. <laughs> did the like? Did you put on like? For the pandemic or anything, you uh, put on weight or you were good? Like, how Man, you know what was crazy was... was uh, you just kept your routine, huh? I kept my routine, man. Sick. Like, Alshon was here and we, you know, we, you know, we did the new jitsu, you know, we got on the mat, like, you know, at the, at just by face, yeah. FaceTime, I mean, not FaceTime, uh, 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 Facebook Live, and we just kept the routine, you know. Nice. Russ, I, I kind of go crazy, you know. Yeah. And get sad. And then we started recording a bunch of stuff, too, like, mm -hmm. uh, in the afternoon. Yeah, I just kept the routine, just kept kept moving, you know. And I remember it took like, like a month off, and just breaking the routine just changes everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, but yeah. You guys kept it, and you've been keeping it ever since. Like I don't think you've ever stopped, right? You didn't stop at all. No, no. Heck yeah. 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 No, but you're not the only one, right? Like so many people like so fall off. Like you get out of the routine. Yeah, <clears throat> and it messes with you. Yeah. It messes with your brain. Yeah. You know, like I think just. Being having other people, friends and stuff, doing like doing these things too, right? It keeps mm -hmm. you accountable, right? Like the doing all these these guys are trying to get better, improve, or always trying to improve and, and get better. Mm -hmm. Motivates you to you know like you know to to do your best as well, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> the, the, the Fight Club too, right? That happened. Yeah, dude, that was a lifesaver for a lot of people. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't talk about that. Yeah, well, except now it's the 2020, almost 2023, so it's okay. It's it's okay fight, to talk it was about Fight Club 2020. Yeah, it's in the past. It's unclassified information now. Well, good because because <laughs> that, that was that was Fight Club was huge, man. Like I still have that T-shirt. I'm gonna have I'll have that T-shirt forever. Fight Club 2020, <laughs> when all the gyms were closed and everything was closed, and I think I don't know, maybe you're getting phone calls or something. It's like, hey, man, like. It was interesting, yeah. Just like one, two. I was like, because it was like Adit was, you know, the cafe never had to close, but uh, uh, the people in the in the yeah, she went to do laundry or whatever, and then she the lights were off, and there was like a bunch of people, like twenty people in the Muay Thai room training mm. with the lights off. You know, it's like what the heck is going on? Yeah. But it started with one, two, and like, hey, it's okay, you know, like it's okay, and then you know, because after the whatever, after some some weeks, you know. Because they were losing their mind, you know. Dude, and straight then up, yeah. and then and then, you know, you and some other people like they, I think they, you know, you met some people and they're like, hey man, you can come and, uh, <laughs> and so and you were, you know, more you met some people and then they started to uh, to uh, uh, invite other people, <laughs> and that was giving me some. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> He's giving me feeding me questions. Yeah. Sweet. Um I'm uh, to this day people come up to me and they ask what's up. No, no, just I was going to you know like yeah, but that that fight club you, yeah. you saw other people you They're saw forever the, grateful for that that like no but they they you saw the somebody in the store and they're like hey you know actually we're doing this fight club thing and then it started to that's how it grew. Yeah. Like oh, this guy's cool. I think he's okay to come and and then it was just like a inside thing. Inside thing. And then yeah. it grew. And then. Then we start doing classes. Now there's well, kids classes. You know, then there there was the protests and stuff. And like we were like there. And, and like we decided we all had a staff meeting, right? And decided to open up. Uh-huh. You know, and then they allowed us to open up. 
and then they closed everybody up, and then we're like, no, we're just staying open. Yeah, because it didn't make sense, right? It didn't make sense anymore. Yeah. And people were like losing their their you know they were, you know, gaining weight. They were like depressed and like you know we live in like Hollywood and like everybody was, you know, they lost their way of life. Like comedians, actors, I mean everything, right? People it's a in the industry, yeah. And they lost their way of life, and the only thing that was keeping them sane and healthy was, you know, this. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing that they had. Yep. So I, you know, it was, it was the right thing to keep to take care of our community. Right. You know, and then the kids. Right you, knew, you knew better. These people walking in like, hey, you need to close down. So what do you know? What do you know about my community? Well, I just, I just came down to that because you saw, yeah. I saw, like, I saw everybody gain weight. Like, guys that were, like, at risk. And that, <laughs> if you do get sick, like, that's, that's, then you're at risk, you know? Now you're at risk. Yeah, stay yeah. healthy. Yeah, stay healthy, you know? And then the kids, like, they were, all, everybody was on Zoom. And some kids, like, the only social interaction that they had was was oh, at the man. gym, you know? That's, yeah. Right? You, I mean, you, you taught on Zoom for how long, you know? Yep. For like two years, and didn't, wasn't it for a couple of years? Um, Zoom, it was yeah, actually at least yeah. a year. At least a year, you forgot, yeah. right? You we forgot. We did the Zoom for like a couple months, and it was only Zoom. And right. then once we came back to Fight Club, the, some of the people that were doing Fight Club had kids as well, and they wanted to train too. Yeah, and that was their interaction, their social interaction, yeah. while everybody else was like separated, and yeah. these kids aren't interacting with other kids. These kids, they we had a. We had a kids' fight club too, so yeah, and alongside with the people. No, that the kids. We, had, did we have. It wasn't. We just opened it up, you know. After that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the a, fight club <laughs> was just like it was just like. Yeah. It was a couple people, and then they. Hey, is it okay if I invite him? If I invite him, and then. Yeah. Just, and then yeah. it was like twenty people, like. Yeah. And then after that, yeah. we're like, just like screw it. Yeah. Then after the protest with all the people together, we're like this doesn't make sense, and so we we had a staff meeting, and we all kind of decided like, hey, we want to just have classes, and they allowed us to open up anyway. Yeah, man. Yeah, huge, huge. Like that's <laughs> it, people still come up to me to this day, and they're like, "I remember when Fight Club happened, and you know, like I was going crazy, and if it wasn't for that, it like I'm, that's why I'm still here today." I'm like, "Wow, wow, yeah. dude, this is this is a big yeah, community." Yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of people. Yeah, they started at that time, you know. A lot of people started too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it just keeps. People, they kept, I know kept, it kept going, me, kept going. Yeah, yeah, it, it kept me sane. Like yeah. coming here, I think I took like a month or two off. Yeah. And it was driving me nuts. Yeah. A month yeah. or two off of jujitsu, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta I gotta come back. So what was it was the what was the the What does that say, Josiah? He's feeding us questions. Nell's feeding us questions. What can you say to someone who is starting? What advice can you give to someone who it, who wants to start practicing jujitsu or another sport? Right? With me? Yeah. So what can I, what advice can I give to someone that wants to start training jujitsu? Mm, just start. The hardest part is just like coming in here, just like walk through the doors, you know? Um, it's some, luckily, I had my dad to like, like, you got to walk in here. But when I'm first coming in, I'm like super nervous, you know, mm. like just simply coming inside is the is really hard when you first. Why come do you in. Why do you think why do you think Why do you think people get so nervous? Um, honestly, I don't know why. why I don't think why it's would you, meant. Why, why did you get nervous? It was like subconscious, you know. It's like a, it's new, it's new, and you know if it's kind of like one of those things. If you're in, you're in. So it's kind of like a, a life changing thing that you're taking part of that you're that you might take part of you know just to start you know like people go from not doing anything you know physical or uh it's it's just why 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 do why do you think uh people are nervous to come in like you know because you know uh, we're always about like somebody walks in like we we greet them right away make them feel comfortable yeah, right we have, yeah you know we do that yes, right away totally did that when i first came you in, know yeah. so so it's not even you guys it's not even the the gym it's just like i think it's personal what why it's so hard you know yeah of course it's different for everybody right but it's like it's scary right because like speaking it's of fight club art. yeah like man am i gonna get beat up in this mm. in this thing unless you know somebody then that helps right that like, definitely helps yeah. you know but you like i don't think you knew anybody coming no. in here but uh, I think that's that's the thing, right? Is like people people they they're nervous to come in because they think maybe they're gonna get beat up, you know. So it's super important, right, that we, mm -hmm. we greet people right away and make them feel comfortable and mm -hmm. and show them that it is a community. It's a and community. They're yeah. gonna grow here and they're gonna it's it's the right place for them, right? Yeah, 
even that, even knowing like if something's good for you, jumping into that can be a little scary too. Cause mm. it's just, it's simply just like a lifestyle change. Honestly, uh, you change, it's a lifestyle. When you start, when you take a step into jujitsu, it's a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. Like everything has to be, uh, it kind of affects everything. It trickles down into everything that you do. Now yeah. you start eating good. Nelson was messing our, our flow up of, uh, reminiscing. I was, I was trying to reminisce because I'm I'm really proud, you know, of how far you've come. I, th I think it was a good mean? question, but I'm 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 I love reminiscing <laughs> too. Yeah, it's 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 funny to reminisce because like no, but we want to we want we, we, we want to reminisce. Yeah, we want to reminisce because like you have come so far. It's crazy. You're like, like a different person. Yeah, from when I first met you. Yeah, and it's crazy and to think about. Like it's you can help you can help so many people. Like last night, for example. I came in, I walked, and who are you? You're, start, you're standing up straight, posture, walking around, like, you know, taking care. You know, it's like, man, you're legit. Yeah. You know? From, I wish I had a picture of me when I first started. It's like, no, nah, it's a different person. I think we're we're constantly reinventing ourselves in, like, jujitsu and hanging out with you and just hanging out with the right people. Really, like, I, I reinvented myself. Mm -hmm. I'm a different person completely from who I was 10 years ago when I started. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy to think about. Like, it's helpful too because I'm, I'm, I'm still, I still carry, I'm constantly reinventing myself. I still carry some of those insecurities and like. I think we all do. Yeah. We all do. But. Um, Everybody has insecurities. Am I good enough? Right. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's good to reflect once in a while, you know. I'm still working on myself, but think, talking with you and thinking back on how far we've come, I'm like, whoa. Like, I trip out a bit. It's like a trip, you know, and I'm on the I'm I'm on camera, so I'm not gonna cry on camera. But I totally, totally have those emotions. Like, wow, my life has changed, and for the better too. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just extremely proud and grateful. Like uh, your your grandfather, your mom's dad it was cool. I, you know, I got to talk to him a little bit, at, you know, uh, a few times, and uh, you know, I know he's he's really proud of you. And 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 I didn't see your mom at the. She, she, I'm sure she was there at the graduation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah she, right. there was so many people oh, I couldn't, yeah. couldn't, you know. <laughs> but uh, I have a what, video what, of her. She was wild. Anyways. What, what is some? What's the? What was the? What, what did she? What? How did she react? And how did she tell you? Like, with you know, after you got you got your black belt. Okay, the first thing that comes to mind is this video of me getting it right. Somebody's like in the way way back mm. taking a like recording, mm. and all you see is like the ocean of people mm. right sitting down on the mat and then me walking up and you know i'm receiving the black belt then you see just people's heads right they're looking at me and then you just hear in the video like screaming and guess who that is <laughs> it's my mom mm. she's like yeah yeah she's freaking out and then all you see is like after a good like five seconds of this screaming she her, she, her enthusiasm she's always yeah. been like yeah, the yeah. loudest she's been my number one fan mm. but uh, and then you start seeing like all these heads turning Right. They all start turning and like looking at her because she's so enthusiastic about mm -hmm. it that she just like all the people just like, what is what's going on? Like she's so that's the first thing that comes to mind is like, what? What, what, what did she tell you, though, after like, you know, what, what's, what's the what's the what did she tell me? Or just, yeah. How did she, you know, after afterwards, did you guys go to dinner or do some kind of activity together or do you go to her house or she's uh, she's just really proud, man. She's, yeah. Did she yeah. tell you anything? Not that I can think okay. of. <laughs> yeah, just her enthusiasm at that yeah, time. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like what about your dad? What about your dad? Uh, oh, my mom also got shirts. She she made shirts for this day for for the graduation <laughs> day. So she, on the back of the shirt it says from Gorilla Inc. It says like Josiah W. Josiah Wakefield De Los Santos, and it's like got my name on it, the Filipino flag, and all that. Like, like like a a, shirt. Like a jersey. Oh, yeah, that's cool. a shirt with my name on it. Um, but yeah, to my dad. My dad, I don't know. My mom, my dad's been there. He's he really pushed me a lot too. So I think right right after I got my black belt, um, and we all split. Like the graduation was over, I went right to my dad and my little sister mm -hmm. Lucia, and just seeing him because he, me and him were training partners too. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just me and Eduardo and and Gino. My dad was there for a lot of it, <clears throat> and. Uh, he really helped me with this journey as well. Like, mm -hmm. make he 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 taught me that even though even though some days like some days I would I I, I could I know I could get away with stuff with him, mm. and 
not you. So I'd, I'd test my dad. I'd be like, dad, I don't want to, I'm not going to train today. I'm not feeling good. And then eventually he started catching on to what was going on. And he was like, no, you got to train. So he literally dragged me to the gym. And I'm extremely grateful for that. And uh, right when I got it, I, I ran to, right when I got my black belt, I ran to my sister, ran to my dad. And it was just like, I don't know. I was just grateful. I don't. I don't even remember what he said. It was just. It was just so loud in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think back. I just, and I'm just thinking after you know after you like you know there's mo there's like moments and even before I guess you know, you like hang out and talk to your dad or mom or just family close people mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you what know, to, to say a few words. That's, that was just me and my dad. We we would reminisce with. on like all the times that we trained together. Okay. Cause my dad's a blue belt and we we. Um, He's a wrestler too, and we would just, we're like training partners, me and my dad. And then you gave your brother a shout out, and they got your speech, called him, uh, called him. Um, I want to thank my brother, Jarrell, my for being my dummy. best friend, <laughs> but most importantly, my training dummy. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's like, yeah, beautiful boy, beautiful boy. Because <laughs> he got the beautiful that was, hair. It's cool, it's cool with, uh, you know, just you, you brought your brother up too, you bring any, leading, bringing your brother up, helping him get better we're spending time up. with them every day mm -hmm. almost every day yeah we're coming up we're coming up together me and the wakefield brothers yeah i always wanted a twin uh like growing up i was like why can't i have a twin you know that'd be so cool and then i realized i got like i got a twin mm -hmm. it's, it's my brother you know and um yeah he's my best friend and training dummy nice yeah nice what do you love about teaching jujitsu Oh, I, I love gives me purpose gives me something something to wake up to and do every day and make me feel fulfilled without that fulfillment I don't know I don't know if I would survive you know there's so much going on in here mm. you know and just having um uh, having a place where I feel like I belong and that I can help people mm. that that that's what I love the most is that I feel like I'm helping people yeah, it gives you purpose and you're helping people. Yeah. Uh, one hundred percent. I don't know what I would do without it. And that's what that's my calling. That's my gift that I was given from from you guys, from God, and that's that's what I'm called to do. I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. How about kids? The kids? What do we, what do you mean? Teaching like, kids? Yeah, what do you love about teaching kids? I love that they're You're uh, the you're the kids uh D H department a, head. What I heads love coach, kids head coach. <laughs> what do I love about teaching kids? Well, there's a lot that I don't love. Let me think. There's a yeah. There's a. It's not. It's not easy, right? No, it's not easy. It makes you like you have to be. You have to be like levels. You know, there's levels, right? I love. There is levels. Yeah. I I love that I get to. I mean, it, it comes back. Uh, maybe it's. I, I I get to influence these kids in a way that I wish I had when I was a kid. Mm. You know. I have a chance to like I remember things that certain people said to me when I was their age mm. like uh and and they stick like I can remember them mm. so and I'm that person now for so many other kids I can what I say sticks and it matters and it will shape them in the future mm -hmm. you know like it's a little voice in my head sometimes like I have an old teacher back when I was six years old and something they said I don't know why but I remember it and it just now I'm that person I can help you know um yeah, and we, we get the opportunity to, to change these kids' lives potentially. So I love that about kids. Also, they're so innocent and just they, they keep you young. You know, they keep they, this like a – they remind you of that life is also like play. You got to play a little bit. Kids are playful. Reminds us, right? Yeah, <laughs> reminds us as adults like, hey, life is play. So serious, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's nice to it's something an old teacher said to me was, I asked her she was a yard duty mm. in my ele elementary school. Okay. I'm like why why do you work with kids? I was like six years old asking this question. I was like why are you working with kids? You know mm. you're so old, and she's like <laughs> she's like yeah well guess how much older I would be if I didn't hang out with you guys, H hanging out with kids just keeps you young you know, mm. uh, which is debatable. I got a lot, a lot of white hairs to, <laughs> to prove that maybe, maybe that's not true, but it's chal challenges. It is, <laughs> yeah, there, it's got its challenges, but it just reminds you that like life is play, you know, and, uh, just have fun. So yeah, I like working with kids for, for that's one of the reasons. Yeah. 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 Cool. Keeps man. you young in a way. Yeah. Yeah. 
you get the chance to to you know mold and help these kids become strong and yeah and man like we have so much adults yeah like this gym the so much potential with these kids every single kid i see in here has a the world champion potential just in life you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh in jujitsu as well you mm -hmm. know the i think what makes the difference with for kids that 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 potentially could be world champions as adults or is just just sticking with it you know P people they start training jujitsu they got full of potential and you know what makes the difference is just sticking with it mm -hmm. you know if they just stick with it they can they can be world champions in jujitsu now hopefully even if they don't continue with jujitsu into adulthood at least we set them up with principles that can help them with their life mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. other than jujitsu like i don't know th they're job or relationships mm -hmm. stuff like that you know so even if they don't become world champions we give them tools to be champions in life so that's it yeah yeah awesome right yeah yeah that's, that's, that's what that's it. what keeps me going man yeah awesome yeah a white belt comes in what like i think that was, you know now was kind of asking that question but and a white belt coming in what do you how, what do you recommend for them to be successful like in jiu-jitsu. They're, they're starting out in jiu-jitsu. Like what are some keys to success for them? What do you what, what do you have to say to them? That was advice. Man, white belt starting in jiu-jitsu. For one, patience with yourself. Mo most often I see people quit because they're just not patient with themselves. They think they should be better than they what they are. They're not seeing it for what it is. Like you're brand new, you're a white belt. Take your time, you know. Trust the process, Trust enjoy the, the process. process. Enjoy the process 100%. That's one of the first things that comes to mind is if you want to be successful in this, you got to be patient with yourself and trust the process. Yep. Um, and consistency, because some people, they get all into it. They go all in and they start training come like, every day, right? They come every day and then all day, all day, which is great to see. But mm -hmm. how long can you do that? You know, you, you just come, you came, you were a couch potato for years before that. And then you mm -hmm. just jump into jujitsu. Maybe you could do that for a couple months. But so m my point is find a consistent schedule that you can do realistically for a long period of time. And then once you do that, then you can start adding more as you need, you know? Um, so that'd be my second thing is like consistency. Talking like a black belt, man. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> I learned from the best. I learned from the best. See, I learned, and that you can take that with in, into life. You know, consistency. It doesn't even not even just jujitsu in life in general. It doesn't take extreme measures to do anything. Just be consistent. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, like we, we were talking down downstairs earlier. Uh, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. You want to say a couple of things on that? Because we we're just talking a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I hear your voice in my head mm -hmm. when a good coach. Okay. So a good coach, <laughs> you know, shouldn't have like when you're, when you're competing, for example, mm. the coach doesn't necessarily have to be there. In my opinion, their voice is already trained in your head. Mm -hmm. So something that, that kind of like makes me laugh a bit is that sometimes I hear your voice in my head when mm. I'm just doing my daily life tasks, like how you do one thing or is how you do everything. How you do the little things is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm like making my bed this morning, mm -hmm. right? And that voice pops into my head. Like, I don't want to make my bed. So I'm like about to walk away from it. I'm like, I'll just leave it. I'll do it later. And then your voice pops in. How you do, <laughs> how you do the little things is how you do everything. And I'm like, I, I turn around and I make my bed, you know, cause it's true. Um, because then it trickles down or it trickles up. I don't know how you do the little things is how you do everything. So if I'm like, if I, would, if I don't do my dishes, if like, for example, my house, it's easy to let it become a mess. Mm -hmm. But that's a reflection of the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, if I let my house become, this is a little thing. The house, mm -hmm. house is a little thing. If I let that become a mess, the rest of my life is going to follow suit, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been really diligent. That's, great, <laughs> That's just an example, you know, and even my car, you know, I love keeping my car clean too, because I don't know, it's just the energy of having a clean house, a clean mm -hmm. car, mm -hmm. 
everything else just feels, it just kind of follows that mm -hmm. in life, you know? Yeah, man. You feel that? Yeah, for sure. For sure. I was going to ask, I was, <laughs> I was just thinking about, you know, you got to, you got to travel, um, like around the world. Like you, you know, remember you, that, that one time I was super pumped that the, the double gold, you went know, to compete in the Philippines, the oh, middle yeah. open. And I mean, you get, you've traveled all over the world, right? Traveled yeah. all over the world competing. Yeah. Doing jujitsu and, you know. You know, if you want to travel and you like jujitsu, they go together so well. Find a tournament, go travel there, and you can compete, do some jujitsu, meet some cool people, as well as see the world. Like, yeah, it's it's one of my favorite things to do is to travel and compete. Mm. Luckily, it's like I love to travel, but and I, I love to compete. And just putting those two together, it's like, wow, there's nothing better. You know, do you ever think when you were starting out that you're going to be doing all the things that, you, that you've done? No way. Was, just kind of went with it. I just go with the flow, you know, you just, but you just kept showing up. You kept showing up in the morning, you know, <laughs> even though, you didn't, well, you don't have a choice. Right. But you yeah. kind of like, you know, aren't you grateful that you did it? hundred percent. Yeah. A lot of times like you don't know, you know, like I knew what's good for I know what's good for me at the time when I was like starting out training and consistently and. It doesn't feel good, but you know it's good for you. You know you have to do it, and it will pay off eventually. That I know that now, but at the time I was like, man, this sucks. You know, this is hard. Yeah. My body hurts. Yeah. Uh, but the little subconscious in me knows, like, oh, it's gonna be good for me. Why? Why is it good for me? There's so many reasons, like, why. I'm I'm so grateful that I put in all that work because, um, and for, because it it. I mean, I traveled, I've seen the world, you know, I've competed all over the world. I've learned so much more than just jujitsu, like print, like print life principles. Um, I don't know what, what the question was. I'm just kind of like going off here. Yeah, that's it. And just on the yeah. travel, you know, I was going to say there's more, there's more wisdom on the mats. I was trying to go like the, the saying that Hanzo has more wisdom on the mats than in the Ivy League uh, University. It's more wisdom more, on the mats. More wisdom on the mats. Shoot. Then, then I was going to try to find this thing. That's what I was trying to. Because everything I did is experience. It's not theoretical, you know? It's like, or I guess uh, a lot of it was like trial and error, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to talk about competing, that's like, it's like a, let's say, for example, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mad scientist, right? And competing is my way of like testing. I'm trying out ways that don't work. I'm testing my jujitsu and, and with every failure is an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. And that's what competing did for me is like, uh, even though maybe some tournaments I didn't win, I used those to help me learn for the next tournament. Mm -hmm. So I could win. And not only that, I was traveling to, the world at the same time. And to learn, right? No matter what, learn, just to learn, to improve, to get better. Yeah, yeah. Like some of your opponents, like we we picked their uh, their techniques apart, and then you drilled those, and then you started using those those techniques in, in future matches. Yeah, I did a lot of that. I still do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, I learned of course stuff works. That stuff works. It works, right? Yeah, if it works, it works. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, here's the here's the, the the saying. There's more philosophy in jujitsu mats than in any Ivy League school in America. It's like one of Hanzo Gracie's quotes. You know, because I just think of you like that finishing school, whatever, high school, and you doing this. And then I, you know, I see, you, you know, you're living the life, man. You're living the life. You help a lot of people every single day from little kids to adults. You know, your posture, like from early morning till nighttime last night when you were teaching. So cool, man. You know, I'm like, so freaking you know, I, cool, I walked huh? in, I was, I don't know what I was doing. I think I forgot something, my ring or whatever. I got that aura ring, you know? Yeah. And I went aside and I see you teaching and I'm like, it just, it's nice. Like that it's a quick moment, you know, but I'm like, just kind of makes me reflect on, on just how far you've come and just gives me more motivation to keep doing what we do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For real. You know, uh, I, I, I aspire to be like you, you know, I said this in my speech, like, you changed, you, you got it started, you know, you brought me in and literally changed my life. Like who knows where I would have been 10 years ago if I, if we didn't do what we did, mm. if you didn't take me in and, um, and I can see like, man, there's so much more people out there like me, mm. you know, that also need that help. There's like a ocean of people that, that could really use 
uh, a mentor and mm-hmm. guidance, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, so my goal, my purpose is is to be like that, is to be mm-hmm. like you, you know? Uh, I want to open a school. I want to help, just help people as best I can because mm-hmm. it literally changed my life. And mm-hmm. I know that I, there's other people like me out there that need it too. And uh, the more people I can help, the better. Even if I could just help one person, like, man, uh, I'm just one of many that you helped. But, but yeah, huge thank you. Huge, huge thank you to you. You changed my life. And I... And I aspire to do that for others as well. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you for being an, being an example, you know? Thank you for being an example. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so proud of you, man. Amazing. Thanks. Thank you.